you know I'm tired when uh, when I just lose the fight. <laughs> I have my final results that I promised I was going to share with you guys. Since I asked my sheep friends if they could give me one piece of advice for any new sheep farmers going into their first lambing season, what piece of advice would that be? why I'm wearing my Canada toque because we live in Canada and it's May. So this week is a busy week. We have to get caught up with hoof trimming and vaccinating and I'm gonna go through how I do that and I want to also do a whole vaccination schedule uh, with you guys because it's been asked a lot lately. So uh, I'm trying to update you on what you've missed. Uh, Saturday was shearing with Charlie, so I didn't have the whole weekend off, but that's okay. I had yesterday off, which is probably just enough. Now, the shearing video, uh, I'm going to be completely honest, it was probably going to be my last one that I will do. Uh, I am just getting really weary of the negativity that comes from all the platforms now. Uh, Facebook, when I post shearing on Facebook, the shears get really mad because they say Charlie doesn't do it right, and I'm... And I'm a true believer that everyone, everyone writes different, everyone speaks different, everyone does art different, everybody does a job different. And to criticize someone for, for, for shearing a different way than, you know, a traditional shear or however they want to justify however they're feeling, I find is really sad. And uh, we, know, we get enough, enough negativity from, from people that don't understand why and and why we have to shear sheep that when it comes from within it is so hurtful so I don't post it on Facebook anymore because I don't have control of who shares it and I don't have control of the messaging and the context I've tried to share it here on YouTube and YouTube does not like those videos so honestly for that one it's the first video second video I've had to, I'm really emotional had to actually take out that footage and make a link <sighs> so I don't know what to do. Uh, I'm just, I'm really tired and I want to, like, these jobs are not upsetting. Like, I really, truly love Shearing Day with Charlie. It's, it's, it's so good to see him. He's got a family. Uh, he's got Alvin helping him now. It's just so good to see him really thriving and, and his business is doing really well. And just to get, like, hate all the time for something that we actually wish wool sheep, you have to do it. We don't have a choice. Uh, if we want to keep sheep, uh, they have to be sheared or they could run into some major health complications. So it's just, it's, and it, all it is is people just don't know what they don't know. And that, that's why I'm here. That's why I have the channel. But there's only so much I can take. <laughs> so I'm just, I think that's my, I'm actually conceding, which I'm a bit of a fighter. So, uh, you know, I'm tired when, uh when I just lose the fight. <laughs> so anyway, so that's that. That was Saturday. Uh, just just uh, tough kind of coming to grips with that. Oh, poof. And I also found a ewe that is acting blind, is blind, and a little lamb that broke her leg. So let's go check in on those guys and see how they're doing this morning. And then uh, I will regroup and deliver what I came today to deliver to you guys, which you have been asking for for so long. So let's go, let's go deal with this stuff and I will uh, get into what today's video is going to be all about. Where's my little broken leg lamb? There she is. Still holding. That's good. Hey, sweetie. She's like, get away from me. <laughs> All right, so that's on good still, which is good. Hello, lady. How's my goat? Some of you have asked why goat has this little spot where she lost her wool. I think it's from the head bunk. She just rubs. Because she's always eating, aren't you? Yeah. My sweet pea. Good morning, Ruby. How's my lovely? Mm -hmm. So sweet. Coco! Coco! 
Coco. She wants mommy up. Hi. How you doing? You're getting so big. Come here. That's my boy. Hello. There's Rusty. There's Betty. She seems to be a little more. I'm just gonna treat her again. Hey, sweetie. I don't know if you can see or not. She seems to be alert. Anyway, they're already dusty. Look how dusty. They were so clean. Yesterday I went on to Instagram and I asked you guys, now that lambing is over, I asked two questions. I asked my sheep friends if they could give me one piece of advice for any new sheep farmers going into their first lambing season, what piece of advice would that be? The other question I posed for everybody else, any questions that you guys have regarding lambing. And uh, I also am gonna share with you guys the final results of that lambing group. So how many were born, how many didn't make it, how many miscarried, um, all that stuff. Chores are all done, so I hooked up the old Gallagher here, and I quickly just went through all my notes, and I have my final results that I promised I was going to share with you guys. So, this group was bred in November, I believe, November. We had 102 ewes lambed out 244 lambs. On average, there was 2.39 lambs per ewe, which is really good. Uh, my March group last year, I think, was closer to like 2.6, but my mortality was worse. So, might not sound good to you guys, but for me, it's a huge improvement. So, out of the 244 lambs born, I still have 220. So, 2.16 lambs per ewe are still in my barn, which my Big goal for 2020 has been to keep these lambs alive. That's being born alive and staying alive. So a huge, huge improvement for me. Out of that mortality, so it's ten, about 10% 10 mortality, I think I figured it out. Uh, so 17 out of the 24, I believe, that were that are not here were stillborns. So that's 17 out of, um, out of 24. For me, I'm very proud of that. So now my the next goal is to make sure they get to the weaning age. So if I could still be at two by weaning, I would be ecstatic. And then from weaning to market, if I have like very, very minimal mortality over there, that would just be, it's just, it would be a turning point for me for management. And I can really start jotting down the things that work and things that don't work. Uh, so a rundown of what we had for numbers. So we had one you that had quints. 11 had quads, 22 had triplets, 61 had twins, and 7 had singles. Some of those stillborns probably can be attributed to uh, maybe being twisted up inside her or uh, just some issues with the fact that she just can't service maybe 5 and 4 lambs. Uh, another thing that I had, I had, I believe, 3 that went down with milk fever. As they're getting older, they're having more, more lambs, so I just... I really have to, the one thing I do have to improve for the next group here coming up shortly, which I've already been on it and I've ordered some close-up pellet, is really work on my ration. And I'm a little bit worried because my haylage is going to be switching. We're going to be switching from this third cut haylage to the new first cut. And I hate changing feed in the middle of lambing or like right at early lactation. So I'm just, I'm just hoping that I can limp through this feed bag just a little bit longer to keep things just... Uh, consistent and steady. So that's the one thing I, do, I am worried about. But feed is going to be the number one thing that I'm going to just make sure we're okay for this next group. These ewes were bred naturally. So uh, these numbers, people, people have asked me, you know, do you get those numbers because you cedar them and give them PMSG? Uh, this group is actually naturally bred. So what I'm finding is my in-season breeding groups uh, naturally just, they are the ones that are producing the most lambs. So it's actually 
the ones that I seed are, are usually the ones that have the least amount of lambs because I'm doing it out of, out of season. So whether they're just not dropping as many eggs when they're out of season, which makes sense. I have, I think what I'll do is I'll do the top 10 tips first. So if you're, if you are just going into your very first lambing season, uh, I put a question out to Instagram yesterday. I have a lot of sheep farmers over there that follow me there. It's, it's just a nice little community. I love all you guys over there. Uh, so I picked the top, I picked, uh, I think I have a couple of my own at the end. A lot of, a lot of the tips were repeated. So I took kind of the, the most popular ones and I just wrote a top 10 list. So here's number one. Claire Peltzer wrote, uh, matching nutritional requirements with the used pregnancy status in third trimester. And I couldn't agree more. Definitely, you saw it in this last lambing group when I had, you know, three at least ewes come down with pregnancy toxemia or milk fever. I'm not, I'm still not entirely sure which one it was. Very similar, very similar symptoms. They'll go down. They've got probably quite a few lambs in them or big lambs in them. They're probably bigger ewes to start with. So really figure out what those ewes need in those last few weeks of gestation because it can make a huge difference. I talked a little bit about it, what I'm going to do this year, this next lambing group with my feed. So I get a close-up pellet put in that feed. Um, but definitely as soon as you see an animal kind of moving away from the bunk or the last to the bunk, you know, a couple weeks before or even a few days before they're due to lamb um, and they get a little bit wobbly on those legs, get them treated right away because you saw it in my last, I didn't hide anything, you saw it all. So they go down fast and it is so hard, almost impossible in my case, obviously, to get them back up. Uh, Sims Katie uh, said identify mother for next lambing uh, so for example prolapse no milk and won't take lambs and I couldn't agree more with this uh, I do this kind of when definitely when I put them in those lambing jugs those lambing pens I write down as much as I can about that mom you know did she abandon a lamb is she unsure uh, like is, does she have a teeth that's not working um, was it a prolapse? Did she even, did she even threaten a prolapse when she was pregnant, like close to the end of, end, end of her pregnancy? So, uh, Katie's right. Uh, identify that mother, put as many notes as you possibly can so you don't repeat the same problem your next lambing group. Uh, number three, Manitoba lamb. The importance of colostrum, either from mum or a bottle, and those first few feedings are crucial and so, so right. Colostrum can make or break a lamb. You can bring a lamb back almost from the dead if it gets a belly full of colostrum. You can keep a, a lamb alive if it's really cold with a belly full of colostrum, but you can lose a lamb real fast. You can lose a lamb right away if it doesn't have colostrum, or you can lose a lamb f later in life because they weren't get given the, the antibodies they need from mom in those first 24 hours. And, and they might not show it then, they might live, but they might die of what, you, what I would write down as other or unknown, and it's likely due to a lack of colostrum. They can also get E. coli, they can get watery mouth. All those things stem from the fact that uh, they just did not get enough colostrum in those first 24 hours. You can either uh, get the powdered colostrum, which is what I have from Grover. Um, but more and more what I'm trying to do is actually strip out the U. So I'll just bring a bottle, strip out the U, and feed those little lambs uh, because it's cheaper. And uh, I have to strip out that U anyway to make sure she has milk. So if she can give me a little bit in a bottle, that is just bonus. Or sometimes you have a U, like goat, had so much milk and her teeth were really engorged. I could probably easily have got a full bottle of colostrum out of both sides of her udder. And you could actually put those in Ziploc bags and freeze them and then warm them up for, for other lambs. Definitely make use of those ewes that are over producers for sure. Number four, circle our lamb. A good lambing starts at weaning time. Check for a good udder, body condition, and health at breeding. Uh, then less problems at lambing. Absolutely. So before I get, I expose my ewes, uh, I will do an utter evaluation. I used to do my first one at weaning, and what I found is they all kind of feel the same at, at weaning because they're just getting weaned off, so they're hard and engorged, and I just don't want to cause any more stress. So I've waited now, and I actually do all my evaluation before I want to expose the ewes. 
Um, they're in the system anyway. I have to go through my records. So I look at my weaning data, my weaning weight data, and then I look at what their udders look like. If there's any lumps, if there's any um, plug teats, whatever, then they will get marked to get shipped. So that's a good one. Number five, Olivia Sullivan. And I love this one. Trust your gut instinct. If something doesn't seem right, it probably isn't. And I don't know how many times, you know, I come in here late at night and I just, I don't want to wait on a you or, or I just something, but your gut's like, you really need to check that you. Or if a you's taking too long to lay them, you're like, should I check her? Should I leave her? Yeah, sometimes my gut is a little over anxious or overzealous, but uh, it usually pays off if you listen to your gut. Number six, uh, Tiff. Uh, Tiff Paul said patience and being prepared with lambing supplies, i.e. lube, colostrum, and tubing, a hundred percent. And a bunch of you said be prepared. Before every lambing group, I get a lambing kit ready and I show you how I set up those lambing pens. I clean out the pens that they are going to be lambing in. So all these things is just being prepared and a bunch of you had repeated what she said and said being prepared. Being prepared is just, and even just your mind, get your get stuff that you want done in the house done. Um, being prepared even, if you even back up and write down on the calendar the first day you expose those U's, the first day, you know, the ram jumped the fence or whatever, write it down on the calendar because that is your first day you need to devote to this barn, whether that's observing them, or just having a hard deadline of when everything needs to be ready. You have to have your colostrum ordered, your paint bought, whatever. Just get your lambing kit ready for the for that day you write on the calendar. Number seven, T. Shutter, Shut, Shooter Curtis. Uh, first time moms don't interfere when they lamb. Give them lots of space and they will bond way better. Uh, I agree with this too. Um, I try not to, with those first time lammers, I really, really try not to interfere uh, because he's right, I've seen it and I've shared this on videos with you guys. Sometimes you're like, oh, I wish I didn't touch that lamb because they sometimes can, as sometimes can associate trauma with that lamb and, and abandon it, like won't want anything to do with it. Sometimes it's just shock and when the hormones kind of wear off, they, they get a scent for the lamb and they're okay. But uh, more times than not, if it was a really traumatic birth and you had to help, um, they, they can and they will abandon those lambs. So, so that's right. But in saying that, if you have to help, you have to help. And unfortunately that's, that's just kind of the name of the game with sheep. Number eight, this is a kind of a, <laughs> I like the name of this, F.U. Sheep Company. Make sure the udders you isn't clogged and that she has milk. So I learned this the hard way uh, when my first year in this barn, I had a whole bunch of lambing and the lambs were, I remember being so proud of them because they looked so good and all the lambs were up and tails were wagging and they were all found the udders and everything was good. I, mean, I think Jamie came in and said, have you been checking their udders to make sure they have milk? And I said, oh, no, the lambs are wagging their tail. If they're wagging their tail, they're getting milk. That's what I was always told. He's like, Sandy, <laughs> you have to squeeze their teeth to make sure there's milk. If not for the lamb's sake, for at least your sake, when you go into lambing next group, uh, and that you had been dry in that quarter. I'm like, oh. So from that point on, um, I've always stripped the U. I put her in the lambing pen with the lamb, and then I just do a quick couple squirts out of her teat just to make sure there's no problems, and you do catch problems, so that's a great one, and I learned the hard way on that one. Uh, number nine, this is from me, and I did talk a little bit about this in one of my latest videos, but knowing the signs of labor. So really, study and watch and observe. Take some time and stand with your ewes when you have a group that are lambing and just really understand the signs of when she's in labor, when it's early labor, when you have time, when you should be concerned. And for me, you know, when I see her backed off the feed bunk and starting to paw at the litter and circle and kind of looking like she's nesting, I know within that day she's going to lamb. But am I going to go and ch check her and do an internal? No, that's the first stages. The next thing you should see is a mucus plug kind of pop out or some sort of discharge and that's quite normal. Still, do not interfere, she's fine. The time when you should start to interfere is she if she is actively pushing for a long time. So if she's down, actively pushing, there's not really any, even if there is something coming out um, and she's pushing and pushing and pushing. If you see feet and a nose, she's probably okay. 
Um, if you see a, a, no, a head and no feet, she is not okay. Get in there and get that lamb out. Her feet are probably back. If you see nothing and she's pushing for like a half an hour, 45 minutes and nothing is coming out, not even discharge, do an internal because that lamb is likely malpositioned. It's probably coming out backwards, knowing when that you is in labor. It's really important. It'll make your life easier just for that decision making process and when you, should you interfere and when should you not interfere. And many of you said, do not interfere, let the ewes do their thing. And I 100% agree. Um, but sometimes if you start to understand what your ewes do, you will uh, act a bit quicker and save some lambs. The number 10 one, I, I took ownership of that one too. And for me, this is something that I've had to learn and that's how to foster lambs. So if you have a, a flock that has quite a few multiples, really practice in on trying to foster some lambs. So for me, it's timing. So if I have a ewe that had four lambs, but I had a ewe that had singles right at the same time, I will try to grab, I will try to grab a quad or a triplet and put it with the you that just had a single if everything's still wet if that single still wet or say she had twins and one died if you can take all that gunk that was on that twin or if she's got a little bit of a water bag left grab it i know it sounds gross but smear it all over that lamb that foster lamb and most of the time she will accept that lamb especially when she's crazy with hormones after she lambs but don't take it too personally when everything dries off she sometimes loses the scent on that lamb the lamb starts to smell like what she originally smelled like or just the hormones hormones of her loving another lamb wears off and she just won't have anything to do with it don't take it personally it's just nature and uh, I've learned the hard way that just you win some you lose some drive on, bottle feed, do what you have to do. Those are my top 10 tips. There's a ton more that you guys have, have given me. If you want just a video on tips, let me know. Let me know what you guys actually want and I'll, I'll, I will do it. I don't know if that's enough for a video. I feel like that's a lot. Yeah, I'm gonna take the rest of the afternoon and start hoof trimming and vaccinating this next group. So this week I will show you a little bit of that. I'm gonna go through my vaccination program with you guys. And uh, yeah, I'll just, whatever is happening this week, I am coming at you. I'm hoping to do daily vlogging through the work week, but I really need to take weekends off, guys. Um, I just, I need to get a little bit of rest here before lambing starts up again already in June. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all your support. And uh, yeah, if you have any other questions, please comment below because all your questions help me make these videos. So have a good rest of your week, guys. Take care.